So, if you want to have an intense running shot in your next film, but you don't have the right professional gear to do so, <laughs> hey, it's a good thing you hit this video then, because today we're looking at how to fake a running shot through the woods by intensifying it, adding some energy to it, all with an After Effects, starting right now. So the reason for the quotation marks when I'm saying faking this is, uh, well, you see, we're, we're not faking running in the woods. To get the shot, we still have to run in the woods. Uh, what we're faking is the length of time that the shot lasts. It's gonna be longer even though the shot's actually much shorter uh, when we got it on set. And so if we look at this shot right here, we can see our character Ellie running through the woods. By the way, this is from my short film that I'm working on right now. If you wanna know more about this short film, you can follow the um, its page on Instagram, Worm Radio Short Film, at Worm Radio Short Film. I'll put a link in the description as well. So anyway, so we have this one shot of her just running across in the woods and the cameraman is just standing in one spot, just panning with her, okay? We did this twice. You can do this as many times as you want. The more times you do it, probably the better for this effect. What did you do, Austin? Well, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, so we have this shot right here. What we're going to do is we are going to um, layer the second shot on top of it. So we have this first shot and then the second shot right there. And you can tell that it's the second shot because the bottle is in her other hand. Again, I didn't know we were gonna edit it like this in post. So make sure we have continuity going. Um, if you're gonna be doing this effect. But just disregard that continuity issue. You can see here where we're cutting it at, uh, I was purposeful to making sure that when we went from shot A to shot B, her body position is as close as possible. And for the third shot, which is just a reloop of the first one, because again, we only did this shot twice, uh, I used this tree in the foreground here as a hitting cut, and you can see it uh, plays really well. I actually really can't even see the cut, but you can tell that it's cutting because bottle is in her right hand and then it goes to her left, unless she did like a quick switch. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add some more foreground trees to help with the speed at which it looks like she's running at and to hide the cuts even more. So if we go to this shot right here, we have a nice foreground tree. We can control D on that shot. Uh, right mouse click, go to time and then freeze frame. And then we can just take that frame right there and with our mask pen tool, we can cut out this little foreground tree right here. And then let's go ahead and move it right where uh, our first cut is between uh, clip A and clip B. And we can actually take our tree, control alt home just to get our anchor point in the center. Not 100% necessary, but I just like to do it. I'm gonna move the tree to the right off screen and then let's go a couple frames uh, back here and then let's hit P on that uh, layer. Select the stopwatch to create a keyframe for our position and then using the page down uh, button, that's what I'm using to go forward and then page up to go back. We're just gonna go uh, a couple frames ahead, we'll probably go like four or five and then take our tree uh, still image and then just drag it across the screen and you can turn on motion blur. It's not 100% necessary because the tree that we cut out actually already has a natural motion blur that it would have already uh, for where it's moving. Uh, what we will want to do though is add some feather to that mask. Let's like add a feather of like 55. Actually, let's go 100. Uh, soften it up and you know, it still doesn't look good enough. Let's go 155. And if we hit play, we can see that the tree moves far too fast. I can never get the proper keyframes right for the tutorial. So anyway, let's like double the length of that right there. Let's solo the layer so we can better see it. That speed looks good. I'm actually going to add motion blur just to satisfy. And then let's unsolo the layer. And now let's move this layer. Uh, see, we can go put our uh, time code right where the cut happens uh, to the next clip. And then let's move this top layer that uh, is the foreground tree to when it's right in front of her. So like right there. And that right there is going to best hide the cut for when we cut from the one shot to the next. Now you can see here, as we're cutting, we're also gaining um, this tree right here, you see how that tree is just like popping up out of nowhere? What we could have done is we could have just uh, select this uh, clip B and then let's create a mask um, right here around it. And then we can select the stopwatch on mask path to create a keyframe. And then let's go um, a couple frames. And what we want to do is, is we want to follow this tree right here, we want to follow. So let's actually, for the first keyframe, just start it right there. 
and then just go a couple more frames go ahead keep it right in the center of that tree keep going ahead and there we go and then we want to take this uh, clip A right here and extend it out underneath so we don't get that uh, black little area and you can see now we have taken away that tree that hid that weird cut. Okay, so for the second cut, uh, there's really no need to do that tree effect because uh, the cut is already well hidden. So for these trees, I'm just gonna go through and just add a few more random ones, not to help with the cuts, but just to help with the speed of which it looks like she's running. gone through and added more trees. I've labeled them brown so they're easier to notice. Brown for bark and dirt. And I guess if a dog takes a crap by a tree. You also want to be sure to cut your layer when it's done being used. So you can see this clip right here. The moment it goes off screen, we cut it. That's going to help your computer uh, process everything faster and prevent it from freezing more easily. So now select everything in your composition. Right mouse click, pre-compose. Okay, so with this pre-composed layer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the tracker uh, window. And uh, if that window is not there, we can always go to window down here and select tracker. And you want to select your layer, click the stabilize motion. You're gonna have this tracking point come up and you're gonna wanna track this point um, to their face, to their eye, to their nose, to their ear hole. Uh, I'm gonna put it right on this little silver dot right here. It's very convenient for us. We have a nice tracking point right here. And then we're just gonna go frame by frame. I'm gonna track the first point. It's a pretty blurry shot, so it's not gonna track that well. So instead of letting the software try to do it, I'm just gonna go frame by frame and do it by hand. So once you're done with your tracking point, you just wanna hit apply and then hit OK. So once we do that, you can see that we're left with this wonky shot, but if I take my cursor right here and uh, hit Play and then put it right on her ear hole where we have the tracking point, you can see that that is staying basically completely still. And that's what the effect does. So now we just want to adjust the size and position of our shot so we're not seeing it clip. So what we can do is we can go to try to find a point where it like moves out the most, probably, honestly, probably right there. So this was shot in 6K. So even if you're shooting in 4K and you're uh, rendering out in HD, you know, you still got a lot of wiggle room. So I'm going to scale up to like 135 um, on this last frame and then just adjust the position right there. And then let's go ahead and create a keyframe for the scale and the position on that frame. And then if we go through, we can see here, it's got a lot of clipping here, so we can move the shot uh, to prevent that. And then if we play through again, we got some clipping here, we can adjust it a little bit right there. Uh, still got a lot of clipping, let's just move it a little bit further down. Um, and yeah, we just go through and do that. Let's see, the top part right here, move it up. Y'all, my nose always starts itching so bad when I do these tutorials. Now after adjusting that, if we hit play and look through, boom, man, we have no clipping. And how much more intense is that shot looking? It's looking way better than what we started with. I'm loving it. The last thing I will leave you with is let's say that you wanted to still render out in 4K or something. You just, you just didn't want to scale up so much. I mean, I scaled up uh, like 135. Let's say you just didn't want to scale up that high. Let's say you only wanted to go to like 115 scale, okay? And so we're still having this clipping issue, but you don't want to move it around too much because then she's like going too far off center frame and whatnot. So what do you do then? Okay. So what do you do? So what we can do is, is we can, let's go to a part where it's really clipping, so like right there. Okay, so right mouse click on our clip, go to effect, go to stylize, and go to CC repeat tile. Uh, in the tiling, we can go from repeat and change it to unfold. And then we can see where it says expand down, which is the bottom part, which is where it's clipping. Um, we can adjust that number to bring it up, and you can see it's just unfolding um, the shot. Uh, and then if we, unfold the left side as well. So if we play through, we're not as cropped in, but we do have a little bit of wonkiness at the top here that does stand out where her helmet uh, seems to show right there. So what we can do there is we don't have to adjust the expansion, but we can just adjust the position. So from right there, we can create a keyframe, go a couple frames over, and then just move the clip up a little bit, and then just move it right back down to where it was so we totally hide um, that weird helmet. I think we gotta adjust it a little bit more. 
So yeah, with CC Reputile, we're able to get the same effect that we got before, but we're only expanding it to 115. You can try to push it even more if you want to not expand at all. The unfolding effect does work okay with the sides. It's not going to work that well with uh, her body because when it's unfolding where her body is it's far more noticeable than the blurry trees and everything and we are left with that shot right there Which looks great, but just imagine with sound design So that is how we intensify our running shot in our action sequence for our action film Make sure that you like subscribe hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything this channel is dropping God bless and I will see you in the next one